a sleek, agile tank slowly emerged from the Vietnamese countryside. As the blazing sun cast shadows across the dense canopy, the 16-ton American M551 Sheridan appeared. Equipped with a powerful 152mm main gun capable of launching MGM-51 Shalady anti-tank missiles and armed with impressive maneuverability, the Sheridan made its way across the rugged terrain, ready to strike fear into the heart of the communist foe. Sheridan's opened fire against approaching North Vietnamese forces. The American tankers held their ground with lethal accuracy, despite being outnumbered. The main guns were so powerful, they lifted the front ends of the tanks a foot and a half with every shot. Bewildered by the sight, the enemy spotters notified their commanders and turned tail without questions. If a 16-ton beast could be pushed back with such violence, its rounds sure packed a punch. The United States military first employed light tanks during World War I. Nevertheless, their use was minimal during the conflict and was more of a mixed bag for successful operational usage. Fast forward to World War II, when the U.S. Army decided to test them again for military operations in Europe and North Africa. The M3 or M5 Stuart was tailored for infantry support, but its 37mm main gun was soon outclassed by German panzers, rendering them useless for support. Thus, they were left as reconnaissance vehicles for armored columns for the rest of the war. The Army then perfected the light tank design and introduced the M24 Chaffee in late 1944 to even the odds against the Reich's fearsome tanks. Although the Chaffee sported a more powerful 75mm gun, it had to trade armor to stay light and nimble in combat. As a result, it could not handle itself alone in combat against German Panzer IVs and the devastating Panthers and Tigers. Despite the lackluster results of the M24 Chaffee, the Army was not ready to let go of the light tank and introduced the M41 Walker Bulldog in 1949. This was an airdroppable light tank armed with a potent 76mm M32 main gun and armor over one and a half inches thick. Still, the M41 was plagued by a noisy, gas-guzzling engine and was overweight for the airdrop roll. As a result of this infructuous light tank design, the Army got rid of the tank weight categorization. It introduced the MBT, or Main Battle Tank Doctrine, which focused on a powerful gun caliber and a vehicle that could be used for many roles. As the Korean War neared its end, the Army settled for a replacement of the M41 and the M24 Chaffee tanks. The new vehicle had a weight limit of 18 tons to stay light and compete against the Soviet PT-76, an armored vehicle capable of traversing rivers. The Army had chosen the M48 Patton as its first main battle tank, but the brass was still interested in producing an armored reconnaissance airborne assault vehicle. Besides the weight limit, the ARAAV design was to be armed with a T-92 76mm main gun and tailored for amphibious capabilities. Although the design was portable enough for the airborne and recon role, it was too small to allow for amphibious capabilities, leading to a redesign. By 1958, the project reached a halt and was cancelled, leading the Army to issue a new requirement for the vehicle. Over 12 companies issued their designs, but ultimately, the win went to Cadillac. The new tank was dubbed XM551 and was based around the Soviet PT-76, offering cross-country support, lethal firepower, and transport capability for infantry. Cadillac's design was manned by a crew of four, with three in the turret and a weight of over 15 tons. In June 1960, the prototype was approved under the name Sheridan, in honor of Civil War-era General Philip Sheridan. Twelve prototypes were produced for testing in the following years as tensions over Southeast Asia escalated and American military involvement increased. In 1965, the production contract was awarded before meticulous testing had finished to prepare the vehicle for immediate deployment in Vietnam to bolster the effectiveness of the Army, Marines, and South Vietnamese military operating in the jungles of the countryside. The M551 Sheridan weighed 16 tons had a length of 20 feet, a width of 9 feet, and a height of 12 feet. It was powered by one General Motors GM 6V53T six-cylinder diesel-fueled supercharged engine, capable of delivering 300 horsepower at over 2,800 revolutions per minute, and could operate for approximately 373 miles without refueling. The tank's main armament was light and devastating. 
the M81E1 rifled cannon packed a punch with its short barrel that could fire either missiles or tailored ammunition for direct fire support. During its first deployments, the Sheridan only fired 152mm rounds, as the mighty MGM-51 Shillelagh anti-tank guided missiles were still not ready. Once they were, the Sheridan was armed with eight missiles to tear apart Soviet-made vehicles employed by the North Vietnamese Army and to destroy fortifications hidden in the jungle. Nonetheless, American troops soon realized that launching shillelaghs damaged the gun around the breach, leading to cracking. This was due to the unique composition of the MGM-51. Compared to standard case ammunition, the missile consisted of a projectile fixed to a combustible case propellant charge, which led to a harmful buildup of gases in the breach. Although this prevented unintended detonation of ammunition, the loader had to wait for the breach mechanism to be cleaned and reset before firing another round. Besides the damage provoked by the MGM-51, this also limited the crew's rate of fire during combat. While the M48 MBT could fire up to 17 rounds a minute, the Sheridan could only fire two rounds, depending on the crew's quickness. Additional armament comprised a 12 7mm machine gun of the commander's cupola, one M73 coaxial machine gun in the turret, and eight smoke grenade dischargers. The first Sheridan arrived in Vietnam in January 1969 with factory evaluators who were to analyze their performance. The vehicles were incorporated into the 1st and 4th Cavalry Regiments. Soon, 200 Sheridans began to replace M48 Patton MBTs, which were later transferred to the South Vietnamese military. As the Sheridans dropped into combat, their strengths and weaknesses became evident. Its vulnerability to mines and RPGs posed a significant threat, leading to the addition of extra armor on the tank's floor. The lightweight aluminum armor also proved susceptible to penetration by enemy heavy machine gun rounds, while its caseless main gun ammunition posed a severe risk of explosive hazards when hit. Enemy explosives often created an ignition source, and fire became visible. Crews were ordered to abandon the Sheridan immediately before an explosion. Problems extended to the main gun itself. The bore evacuator often malfunctioned, leaving casing remnants inside the breach and creating a fire hazard. Moisture-induced swelling of ammunition added to loading difficulties. The tank's light build struggled to contain the tremendous recoil, with reports of the tank's front lifting off the ground upon firing, causing components like radios to loosen. Moreover, Asia's humid conditions took a toll on the tank's electronics, leading to water droplets collecting around the turret and affecting the functionality of various systems. The tropical weather, compounded by cramped crew compartments, also resulted in crew fatigue and engine overheating due to vegetation clogging the mechanisms. The hatred towards the Sheridan grew among the tankers, but it was still deployed to aid the infantry during search and destroy operations. The weaknesses of the Sheridan also worked in its favor. During an enemy attack on Bien Hoa in February 1969, Major William Prevett and his unit were able to fend off the communist forces in a dramatic fashion. The Sheridans, aligned in formation, began to pound the enemy from afar. Their 152mm guns roared and lifted plants and dust with violence. As the enemy closed in, they realized the Sheridans were no standard tanks, their main gun lifting the 16-ton beasts a foot and a half off the ground with each shot. Consumed by fear, the North Vietnamese broke off the attack and retreated after witnessing the power of the tank's gun. The Sheridan's production ended in 1970, after more than 1,700 were delivered to the army. It served in Vietnam until the last American troops were evacuated. In 1972, the army added an ANVVG laser rangefinder to the tank. Another common modification was the addition of an ACAV set, or an armored cavalry assault vehicle shield, placed around the commander's 50 caliber machine gun. The Sheridan was phased out in 1978, but remained in service with the 82nd Airborne Division, as it remained the only air-deployable tank in the U.S. inventory. It was used for combat operations during Operation Just Cause, the U.S. invasion of Panama in 1989, where the first and only combat airdrop of a tank occurred. Other Sheridans were deployed via C-141 low-velocity airdrop to aid military operations conducted by the Army in urban areas. Although the same problems that plagued tankers during Vietnam persisted, the Army did not have a replacement for the Sheridan, and it remained in service with the airborne troops, leading to its last deployment in the Middle East. 
In 1990, Sheridans were deployed to Saudi Arabia as part of Operation Desert Shield, while NBTs arrived via ship as the coalition buildup of armored vehicles. Once Desert Shield evolved into Desert Storm, the Sheridans were deployed in the reconnaissance role to spot Iraqi anti-tank guns and Soviet-made T-55s. Although the tanks never directly engaged enemy armor without support, they successfully fired six Shalili missiles during their service in the Middle East. In the aftermath of Desert Storm, the Sheridan was removed entirely from active service and employed as op for or opposing force at the National Training Center in Fort Irwin, California. The last Sheridans were withdrawn entirely in 2004. Most of them were scrapped and used as targets. Since then, the Army was left without any light tanks in its inventory until the M10 Booker was announced by the military in 2023.